In running live steam locomotives, one of the first items we should talk about is safety, and in this case we have a fire extinguisher that should be kept on hand at all times when operating a live steam engine. On the opposite end of fire, we need some sort of fuel source, in this case, butane. I have here two different can styles of butane. The first has an integrated nipple that allows you to put the fuel directly into the locomotive reservoir. Unfortunately, the nipple is quite short on this and sometimes limits your access. The other can style is commonly available at Asian markets and requires the use of an adapter in order to mate up to the locomotive. The adapter, as seen here, has a much longer nipple on it, and this allows greater access for fueling. Moving on to lubrication of your locomotive, we have two different classifications of oil. One is steam oil and the other is general lubrication. For general lubrication, I like to use either a three-in-one oil or the LGB lubricant, as seen here. Three-in-one oil has a tendency to eat plastic, so depending on the construction of your live steam locomotive, you may want to shy away from the use of three-in-one oil. On the opposite end, we need to have steam oil, and this is what goes into the actual cylinders. I have two different brands, one being from AccuCraft and the other from Aristocraft. The AccuCraft has a built-in applicator that works quite nicely. Unfortunately, the Aristocraft is just like a big bottle of motor oil, so I recommend the use of an oil can with an integrated pump and nozzle. This way you can direct the oil flow as needed. In order to operate a steam locomotive, we're going to need to boil water. In this case, we have to use distilled water, as this works best in our small-scale boilers. This distilled water is commonly available in gallon form for under a dollar at your grocery store or Mega Mart. Once you've obtained the water, you're going to need some way to put it in the locomotive. When starting with a cold boiler, I recommend some sort of graduated device such as this one from AccuCraft. This is a syringe with an attached hose. This way you have some idea of the amount of water that you're putting into the locomotive. Once under pressure, if you have a good all valve, you will need some sort of pump bottle. In this case, I have two different brands, this from AccuCraft and this from Aristocraft, and these made up to the individual types of good all valves. Rounding out our collection of items that you'll need to run your live steam locomotive, in the realm of safety, I recommend a good, sturdy pair of leather gloves. And then, as you've seen, we have a lot of items that we need to take with us to the track side, and I recommend getting your own dedicated toolbox. This way all the little parts and pieces and little tools and wrenches that came with your engine can be kept in one place. This way you're not running all over your workshop trying to find all the little parts and pieces that you need to run your engine. Prior to operation, it's a good idea to walk your tracks looking for any debris that might have landed on the railroad, blowing leaves off of the tracks, as well as inspecting switches for operation at the points and any debris that might have collected in the frogs or guardrails. Before adding anything to the locomotive, it's a good idea to check the controls. In this case, we have RC or radio control. If you have RC, make sure that you turn on the transmitter first and then turn on the receiver. Once these are both engaged, you can check the operation of the controls to make sure that they are operating as intended and freely. If you don't have radio controls, you should still check that all the hand controls are operating freely and correctly. Next, we will need to add steam oil to the locomotive. Located somewhere on your engine should be a reservoir for steam oil. In this case, on the AccuCraft Ruby, there is a reservoir located inside the cab. We begin by removing the filler cap and then adding just enough steam oil as described in the directions. In this case, not quite to the top. We then return the cap and secure it. Now we can add water to the boiler. Begin by removing whatever filler cap you have. In this case, I have a good all valve. Your engine may just be equipped with a regular screw-in type topper. That's not a problem. I usually set mine aside on the running board just to keep it out of the way and so that no dirt collects. We'll start by putting a full syringe of water taken directly from the water jug into the boiler. I like to slowly suck the water up. 
and we put the hose into the filler nozzle and we squirt water into the boiler. Depending on the size of your boiler, this may take as many as three or four applications. As you put water in, eventually you'll put enough water in to completely fill the boiler. What I do then is back off by about 20 to 30 milliliters depending on the size of the boiler. This gives enough room inside of the boiler for steam to form. Because this water came directly from the boiler, I typically just discard this in case it had any contaminants that I don't want to put back into the jug. Finally, return the filler cap or good old valve to the top of the boiler and secure. Now we can add fuel to the locomotive. Located somewhere in your engine, either in the cab or somewhere in the tender, will be a reservoir for the butane fuel. In this case, in the AccuCraft Ruby, the reservoir is in the cab. I just mate the nipple from the can to the reservoir and press. There's a little bit that leaks out. I'm not the most precise holder. Your mileage may vary. You come to the end of the fueling and begin to spit back like this. You can pull the can off and fueling is done. Now we can light the boiler. On the AccuCraft Ruby, we start by opening up the smoke box door and introducing a flame. We then carefully open the butane valve and we monitor the fire inside the boiler. Close the smoke box door once you think you've got a manageable fire. And now we wait for steam to build. On a colder day like today, sometimes if you jiggle the engine, you get a little bit better gas flow. On other models, there's a warm water reservoir to help heat the butane. But today it's rather cool out, so just shaking the butane will help build fire. Once the fire gets hot enough, the cab will be warm inside and you won't have to keep doing this. While the steam engine's lit and coming up to pressure, it's a good time to put some general lubrication around any of the moving parts. You don't have to use steam oil for any of this stuff. That steam oil is just for inside the cylinders. Because this engine's all metal, I'm using the 3-in-1 oil. Okay, the engine's kind of warming up. We're ready to get going here. I'm going to start by slowly opening the throttle. I'm going to push the engine a little bit to overcome the hydrostatic lock. And we'll see if she'll take off. Sometimes you have to work it back and forth so we can kind of overcome that hydrostatic lock. The engine's been out operating for a little while, and we'd like to add some more water to the boiler. This engine has a good oil valve, which will allow me to add water under pressure using this pump bottle. I first begin by priming the pump bottle to ensure we have good, clean water coming out. 
fit the nozzle down into the good old valve, applying a little bit of pressure as we pump.